As we passed through the next village, the horse went slower and slower until finally it came to rest by the roadside opposite the village inn. He then leaned against the bank in such an unconcerned manner that I momentarily expected him to fold his front feet and complete the picture. His half-closed eye gave an idea of utter boredom with the mundane things of this life and utter indifference to the requirements of mankind in general and George Bouch in particular. In a few moments we were surrounded by a crowd of children from the village school and some of the habitués from the inn opposite. Good housewives were coming from all directions, probably offering up prayers of thankfulness for the promise of a break in the deadly monotony of village life. George tried every art and artifice he could think of to induce Friday to resume the journey without avail. As a last resource, he remounted the box and tried kindness. Addressing the horse, he said, Come on, Bridey, old man. Go on, ass, then. This expression of encouragement was received with howls of derisive laughter by the loafers from the bunch of grapes. One of them, whose face would have looked less remarkable on a cathedral with a spout in its mouth, removed a filthy clay pipe and sarcastically exclaimed, What did he say is me, mate? George, however, treated the queerest with the contempt he deserved, and again addressed Friday with terms of encouragement and affection, yea, even with flattery. Except, however, for one feeble flicker of the tail, occasioned probably by hearing again long-forgotten words that recalled memories of happier days, Friday remained proof against all George's blandishments and gave no sign of resuming the journey. Said George undauntedly, No then, Friday, old boy, pick up the bit, old son. Good ass then, good ass, Friday. Ho, ho, ho! roared the loafer. Hold I up, you'll be the death of I. You're what are said, Bridey, Bridey. Do we just look at Bridey? They look a bit like the end of the week we end. But why only corn Saturday night? At this juncture, Friday, who had been drooping and sagging at the knees, leaned still more heavily on the bank and gently slid down with his feet pointing towards the middle of the road. To my astonishment, George took this with extraordinary calm. Climbing down from his seat and securing the reins, he turned and asked me if I would step over and partake of some refreshment, as Friday would be ready to resume the journey in thirty minutes. Greatly mystified, I joined him and pushing our way through the crowd, we entered the inn, where over a pint of cider, George explained the situation. You miss no, sir, said George. Vic asked for in a circus, and one of his tricks were to lie down and pretend to be dead. He can't forget it, and every whip spoiled down he'd have lap in the road without any warning and he'd abide there for just half hour, and you can't budge him, do what you will. Then up he'd a get, and go on as though nothing had happened. The only thing, look, continued George, as it been different today, he were sort of give more notice like. Most in generally to flop down afore I'd a know it, but I'd a fancy You'd a give more warning today, look easy. I had to confess my knowledge of matters pertaining to the equine quadruped was of the slightest, but there certainly had been a noticeable attitude of restraint in Friday's bearing that could scarcely be explained as being idiosyncrasies 
acquired during a course of intensive training at a circus. Well, said George, we must be seen about it, as I must be up there when you start getting up. I did not see the necessity for haste, as I could not imagine Friday bolting and leaving us in the lurch, or rather the pub. However, we elbowed our way back through to find our Friday just as we had left him. At that moment a dog cart drove up, and the occupant, a hearty old man of the farmer type, called out, Why, George Bausch, what be doing, oh? Own an outdoor circus or summit? No, farmer, replied George. Tis Friday, and we one of his dice megrims again. At this the farmer alighted, and pushing his way to where the horse lay, gave him a critical inspection. George Bausch, said the farmer impressively, I didn't know me grim. The ass is as dead as a doornail. Don't he say that, farmer, said George. But I tell you he is. Lift up his head and see for thyself. George lifted poor Friday's head and let it fall back with a sickening thud. Overcome for the moment, George looked reproachfully at Friday for a full minute and then in a hurt tone of voice exclaimed, Well, I ain't never knowed him do that afore. Whereupon the aforementioned worshipper at the shrine of Bacchus again removed his clay pipe and with the skill born of constant practice, neatly deposited a jet of nicotine in the ear of the departed, as he sagely remarked, No, and what's more, they've never known do it again.